Hi everybody, it's Stephanie. So we are having friends over to play video games and I thought it'd be fun to make five easy treats to create a Super Mario themed dessert bar. Let's get started. Let's start with the Mario and Luigi hat and mustache cookies. So my cookie dough has already been prepared and I'm using a special rolling pin with guides on the sides to roll the dough to about a quarter of an inch thick. I got these templates directly from the Nintendo website. They have this really cute craft section that I get so many ideas from. As a reminder, I will put all the recipes, supplies, and templates that I've used today down in the description box for you all. And sometimes I add additional tips or thoughts down in the description box too, so be sure to go check that out. For me, if I chill the cookie dough just slightly, I get a cleaner cut around the edges of the cookies. My hats and mustaches are all cut out and I can pop these into the oven to bake. The hats are going to need a little bit more cooking time than the mustaches since they're so much bigger. Here they are all baked and they will need to cool down completely before decorating. Royal icing consistency is very important in making decorated cookies. For these cookies, I need a 10 to 12 second icing. And that means that when you drag a knife through the bowl of icing, it comes back together completely in 10 to 12 seconds. If the icing is too thick, keep adding a spritz of water from a spray bottle until you get there. To get the image onto the cookie, I'm using the tissue paper method. So what you do is, using an edible marker, trace the image onto a piece of tissue paper. Then you can flip the paper over, place it on your cookie, and then retrace the design with the edible marker. And then when you lift the paper off, you can lightly see the tracing. And actually, I rarely use this technique because I have a projector that I use to project the image on the cookie. So if you are really into cookies, I really recommend that you also get a projector. Let's move on to the fun part, the decorating. This is a disposable piping bag fitted with a number two piping tip. And first I'm going to outline the hat with the icing and then I can fill it in completely. I also use a scribe tool to help blend the icing and fix any imperfections. Go ahead and cover all the hats with the royal icing just like this and then set those aside to dry for a few hours. While those are drying, I'm going to cover all the mustaches in black icing with the same process of outlining and then filling in. The hat cookies have been drying for a few hours and I can now go back and fill in the white areas of the hats. And once those are all filled in on the cookies, they will need to dry out completely overnight. Okay, they're completely dry now and I can go back and use an edible marker to color in the letter on the hats. I just love how these cookies turned out and the fact that I didn't have to make their faces on the cookies made it so much easier. I saw this bob -omb cake pop idea on Pinterest, so it's not my original idea, but it is just so cute that I wanted to give it a go. To make it easier, I bought a cake from the grocery store and it has some of that drizzly icing on the top. So I broke it into pieces and put it in my mixer to mix it into cake pop filling. If you use store-bought cake, make sure you like that cake before you get started because this cake was good, but it wasn't as good as my regular made from scratch chocolate cake. So I kind of wish I would have just made my regular cake recipe. You want the cake to stick together and hold its shape when you squeeze it together in your hand. I didn't need to, but you may need to add a little more buttercream or icing to get it to the right consistency. I like using a mini ice cream scoop to portion out the cake pop filling. That way, all the cake pops are the same size, and then you can roll them into a ball in your hand. This makes actually a whole bunch of cake pops. I made about 15. It was too many, but that's okay. You definitely wanna buy black candy melts from the craft store. I wouldn't try to color them yourself. That would be just such a pain to get to that dark of a color. So melt some candy melts and then dip the pop stick into the candy melt and then push one into each cake ball. And then you can pop those into the refrigerator for maybe 10 minutes or so to set up. Candy melts usually need thinned out because they're too thick for dipping. So to thin it, you could use Paramount Crystals, which you can order online, or from the grocery store, you can get coconut oil or shortening. Now you can begin dipping. So dip the pop straight down into the chocolate and pull it out. Tap off the excess chocolate and then lightly scrape off the bottom so the candy doesn't pull at the bottom of the pop. While it's still wet, stick the pretzel on, and then you can continue dipping the rest of the cake pops and sticking on the pretzels. Okay, let's decorate them. First, I'm making little blue donut shapes out of modeling chocolate, and this little donut shape will wrap around the pop sticks. And now I can attach the yellow M&Ms with melted candy melts to look like his feet. 
I decided to hand paint his eyes, but if you feel that you don't have a very steady hand or you don't feel comfortable doing this, you could also make the eyes out of modeling chocolate. And lastly, I'm dusting the pretzels with gold luster dust. What do you all think of these cake pops? They are going to be very hard to eat since they're so cute. Let's move on to the mushroom cupcake toppers. These are super easy to make. To start, I've rolled out a sheet of blue fondant with Tylos powder mixed into it. And then I am cutting out circles of the fondant and then these will need to be set aside to dry out. Here's a trick to get the pattern traced onto a piece of fondant. So I traced the mushroom image onto a piece of parchment paper and I'm placing that on top of the fondant. Then you can use a plastic tool like this one and it cannot be too sharp or it will poke through the paper. So use the plastic tool to trace the pattern onto the fondant and when you lift off the paper, you can lightly see the tracing. And then you can go ahead and cut out the fondant pieces with an X-Acto knife. The mushrooms also have white circles on them, so I'm cutting these out with a small circle cutter and then I'm sticking those onto the mushrooms with some water. I'm hand painting the eyes, but again, if you do not feel comfortable doing this, make these out of fondant. Okay, I can now move my mushrooms over onto the blue circles from earlier. I'm just attaching that with a little bit of water. I made homemade chocolate cupcakes and added a buttercream swirl to them, but if you are short on time, you can easily buy your favorite cupcakes instead. Any cupcake will work because for these toppers, all you have to do is just place it right on the top of the cupcake. Okay, my cupcakes are finished. They look so cute and that was just way too easy. Let's move on to the next project, which is the Super Mario question mark blocks. The trick to getting perfect blocks is this silicone mold. So I'm brushing melted yellow candy melts into each square of the mold. I'm using a flat brush to make sure I'm getting the candy all the way up to the top of the mold. And once they are coated, I pop that into the freezer to set up. Then I can go back with another thin coat of candy coating to make sure I got everything covered. From here, you can fill them with whatever you like. I went with cake and strawberry preserves and cream cheese frosting. I also made a second batch where I just filled them with Rice Krispie Treats. And actually, I thought the Rice Krispie Treats were a little bit easier to work with. They were easier to cut and also I didn't have to refrigerate them. So I think the Rice Krispies are the way to go. Now that they are filled, I'm covering the bottom of the blocks with another coat of candy melts to seal it up. The question marks are royal icing transfers. So I need a 20 second royal icing, which is what I'm working on here. This template again is from another craft I got from the Nintendo craft page. So what you wanna do is just place a piece of wax paper over the template and then pipe the question marks with the icing. And then these will need to dry out completely overnight. While those are drying, let's take the blocks out of the mold to see how they look. They're looking pretty good, except for the fact that I can see the strawberry filling through the chocolate. My question marks are dry and now they will peel right off the wax paper. And then I am sticking those onto the blocks with more royal icing. I think these turned out really adorable. They're kind of hard to eat though, so I plan on cutting them into pieces so people can take small bites of them. I cannot remember the last time I've made a no-bake cheesecake, so these Princess Peach cheesecakes are such a treat. Let's start with the crowns. So I found a picture of the crown online and I'm using it as a template to cut them out of fondant. You do want to make sure you have some Tylos powder mixed into the fondant so it will help it dry out. The jewels are mini m &Ms that I'm sticking on with royal icing. To make the cheesecake cups, all you need is a cookie crumble type of crust, strawberry preserves or just chopped up strawberries, pink colored cheesecake filling, and yellow colored whipped cream. You can find these little cups at the dollar store, believe it or not. They were only $1.25 for six cups. I thought they were the perfect size and they look pretty fancy. I'm filling the cups with cookie crumble, a spoonful of strawberry filling, then I piped the cheesecake filling into the cup, and then I added more crumble, another spoonful of strawberry, and then I topped it with the yellow whipped cream and the Princess Peach fondant topper. You don't wanna put the crowns on until the very last second because they will start to get wilty after a while. These were really, really fun to make and I'm glad I got to try out something different. Let's put everything together in my kitchen. I wanna set these treats out in a beautiful way, but at the same time, I'm trying to just use the plates and serving trays that I already have on hand. So the only thing I bought here were the two wooden boxes that I used for the cake pops. Making this dessert bar was so much fun and I love the Super Mario theme. If you're here at my house right now, which of these desserts would you try out first?